so we've got a question today from Joseph, and he's asking about a way to hold side control to make sure that he's not vulnerable to his opponent's escapes. And so today's video, I'm not going to show you a bunch of techniques necessarily. I'm going to show you a few con uh, concepts that you can think about when you're trying to use or trying to hold side control. We are going to start from the bottom up. Okay, so. One of the most important things you have to understand about side control is that we always have to block the hip or we have to do something with this, okay? So for instance, if I get side control and I do nothing to block this hip, Chad simply brings his legs back in front, okay? So there you go. So if you think about most side controls, you're typically, right, we put our knee against the hip. If we go to Case Gatami here, my hip is against this hip. If we play a reverse side control position, reverse case be kind of here. Knee goes against the hip. So you always wanna have something against the hip that's gonna prevent that leg from coming in front. Now, another thing, um, you can also use your hand. If you think about some of the positions here, um, a lot of times people will use the hand here to block here. And sometimes if you're in the middle of passing someone's guard and you're having trouble using your legs to stop it, you can put your hand here. You can also, Think about it this way. Another thing you can do with your hand. If his hips cannot turn to the ground, then he cannot escape using that leg, right? So you can do your uh, use your hand here. So if he's trying to escape, you can literally grab the pant and pull up. Okay, if he tries to bring his hips to the mat, he can't do that. In nogi, or you can do gi, but in nogi, the other option you can use is if he turns towards you, take the bottom leg and pull it up, right? You can literally grab this and hang on to it. Um, I typically use that one even uh, in Gia. There was a match that I used against a really, he was squirrely, he's about 170 pounds, and he kept bringing that leg in front, and I would just grab the knee and pull it up. So that's the hips, right? Block the hips, try, do whatever you can to keep them from turning towards you, and that'll stop that. Now, the next threat you're gonna have to look at a lot of times is the ability for him to turn towards you on this side. So one of the things you can do is you can think about the arm here. If I pull his arm up, if I pull the gi up, if I do anything on this side, okay, for Chad to be able to escape effectively, most of the time he's gonna have to get on his side, right? But if he, go ahead and try to get to your side. Okay, he can't do that. Now, you can accomplish this by reaching up, pulling the shoulder, like the, you know, a lot of times you'll see guys hold the side control, they'll pull the shoulder up and then bring their knee up here. This is effective because now his, his shoulder's pinned, very hard for him to bring his shoulders to the mat. If you go to Case Katami here, Again, we pull the shoulder up tight so he's not able to turn towards me. Okay, so always think about how can I get the shoulder, if he's trying to turn towards me, how can I stop that? How can I pull that shoulder up to prevent that? Or if maybe if you got a guy on his shoulders, he's turning towards you here, grab the bottom arm and pull up. Just something to think about. Now, the last and probably one of the most important pieces of the puzzle is his ability to turn towards you with his face. If Chad cannot if he can't physically turn his face towards me, if his neck's locked into the other side, he can't bring his body, it just doesn't work. So a couple options you can do, you can put that shoulder justice on him. And the way that you do that, the way that I like to, is take my finger, like middle finger, get it latched, and you can do this gear no gi, latch it in right here behind his armpit, and then you pull the elbow back towards you. Now, my shoulders, I'm not squeezing, it's literally, I'm bringing my elbow towards me and pushing my shoulder forward. And now Chad's, he literally has to face that direction. So if he tries to turn his body towards me, it's so weak. It hurts his neck, he can't do it. Another option, if you have the gi, right, is you can take the lapel out and you can feed it. And this one's really good for control. You can feed that lapel, and again, add the shoulder justice into it. And you can stay really low. And even if you think that he might be able to bring his legs in front for some reason, you have your hand here to block, okay? So, think of it that way. So Joseph, when you're thinking about trying to hold side control, think about the way that you hold side control and go back to it and say, okay, am I blocking the hips? Am I doing something to control the hips, right? Because that's really important, okay? Am I doing something to control the shoulder? Okay, and if not, if, if any of that stuff, am I controlling the neck, am I controlling the face? Because if you're not doing some of this stuff, you're definitely gonna have trouble holding side control. Also, on a side note, you definitely have to have options for their escapes. So you need to have adjustments when they start to push up into your neck, when they push up against your hips and all that other stuff. It's, go it's going to happen, period, point blank, so you need to have some adjustments for that. Um, you can look on the channel, I've got several, um, 
defense counters for that kind of stuff. If you need them, I can send them to you, but they're on the channel, so just do a search. Uh, and you gotta have those as well, because if you have good control, it's gonna happen at some point that the person is going to counter what you're doing. So, I'm done. Guys, I hope that video helps you. And again, Joseph, thanks for the question, brother.